Okay, so uh, once again guys, no, uh, welcome back no, sa ating lecture sa Transmission Media and Antenna Systems. So we are now live no, sa ating uh, discussion about the uh, continuation ng ating discussion about Lecture 4, Antenna Theory. So for today, no, uh, we're going to discuss uh, antenna types. Game, let's do this. So uh, we have discussed this uh, last time, diba, that we have different or various types of antenna and one of them is the ISO isotropic radiator. No? So ano ba yung isotropic radiator? So isotropic radiator, also known as isotropic antenna, okay, emits the signal uniformly in all direction. In other words, at the distance D from the antenna in any direction, the transmitted signal power is the same. So as you can see, no, its radiation pattern is spherical in nature. So meaning to say that uh, with equal distances, no, at any direction from your isotropic radiator, uh, the signal level is the same. No, so uh, sabi ko nga no na ikwento ko last time no na uh, when I was studying no transmission media and antenna systems uh, before so uh, I thought that the isotropic radiator is the best antenna because lahat ng direction guys equally distributed ang power niya but later on I realized no na uh, isotropic radiator siya yung actually pinakapangit no that's the worst antenna in terms ng directivity Okay? Kaya guys, no, lahat ng antenna natin, okay, always kino-compare natin sa isotropic radiator. Okay? Kasi nga, di ba, para uh, malaman mo, no, kung gaano kakapogi, no, anong gagawin mo? Tatabi ka sa pangit. No, di ba? <laughs> no, so kahit pangit ka, medyo pupogi ka na din, no, pag tumabi ka kay isotropic radiator. Uh, but technically guys, no, in real life, uh, it's hard to make no, an antenna that is similar to isotropic radiator. Keep that in mind. Uh, so that's why isotropic radiator is only theoretical in nature. Okay, so hindi talaga siya uh, kayang gawin. Uh, we cannot mimic uh, 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 the uh, radiation pattern of an isotropic radiator. We cannot have okay, uh, an antenna that radiates equally in all directions. Okay? Uh, another theoretical antenna is the elementary doublet, no? So another term for this is the Hertzian antenna. No, so don't be confused kasi later on, meron tayo Hertz lang. So pag sinabing Hertzian, yan like that one, uh, it refers to the elementary doublet, no? So uh, this is also a theoretical type of antenna. Okay? Uh, this is ano no? Uh uh tawag dito. It has a uniform current along its length and its gain is 1.5. A little bit better, no? Uh, compared to the isotropic radiator. Okay? So, that is theoretical again, no? Yung elementary doublet. So, next natin is the half-wave dipole. So, this is the first uh, practical antenna na meron tayo. So, si half-wave dipole, another term is the Hertz antenna. Okay? This refers to a type of resonant antenna with nominal gain, uh, with, with a total nominal length of half-wave at the center carrier frequency. Okay? So, si half-wave dipole, ito yung parang unang practical antenna, lambda over 2 yung length niya. All right? And its gain is 1.64. So, since this is a practical antenna, there's also a convention that is uh, being used na dito natin kino-compare kay half-wave dipole yung gain. No? Yun nga yung pinag-aralan natin last time, si DBD. So, pag DBD, guys, meaning to say, ang reference natin is the half-wave dipole. Because if we're gonna compare all practical antennas, so si half-wave dipole, siya yung may ano, uh, pinaka-standard na uh, gain. Okay? So, ano mga tatandaan natin dito? Its radiation pattern is bidirectional. So, anong ibig sabihin ng bidirectional radiation pattern? If you remember the radiation pattern, di ba, yung diniscuss natin before, uh, what do you think is the shape of the radiation pattern of a halfway dipole? Sige nga, guys. Ano yung uh, shape, no? No, halfway dipole. If it is bidirectional, anong itsura kaya, guys, no? Nung kanyang radiation pattern. So, yung radiation pattern yung may minor lobe, major lobe, side lobe, no? Na pinag-aaralan natin before. Okay, so what do you think is the radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole if it is bidirectional? Sige guys. Can you... Can you... Anyone? Ano kaya itsura ng kanyang radiation pattern? Anyone from the group? Sino kaya ang... Uh, my idea about this one. Ano itsura ng kanyang uh, radiation pattern? Wala. 
nakakuha loob 180 degrees apart. Uh, maybe that's correct, no? But uh, it, maybe, probably that's correct. Oh, but uh, I think there's uh, a very straightforward way to say it. Okay. Ano yung tsura ng radiation pattern nung uh, half-wave dipole? But I think that's also correct, no? Dual lobe, 180 degrees apart. I think that's right. But there's a, there's an easy way on how can you describe the radiation pattern of uh, a half-wave dipole. Anong itsura niya, guys? Okay. I think dual lobe, 180 degrees apart is correct. Uh, but that's uh, that's quite weird way to describe it. There's an easier way to describe the radiation pattern of a half wave dipole. Oh, nga, oh yeah, yeah, bidirectional. So, pag sinabing bidirectional, okay, ano nga yung ano niya? Ano nga yung itsura niya? No, kung bidirectional ang kanyang radiation pattern. That's what I'm asking. Okay, number eight. Mukhang number eight yung itsura niya. Okay? So, the radiation pattern parang eight yung itsura. Na gets, guys? Okay. So, di ba? Parang sabi ko nga, di ba? Parang tama naman yung oh, uh, na, yung dual lobe 180 degrees apart. I think that's correct. But that's kind of hard to imagine, right? So, the correct answer actually is figure a figure of 8, right? Kung ano yung itsura ng 8. Ganun yung itsura ng direction, uh, nung radiation pattern niya. Kasi yung major lobe tsaka minor lobe have, has the same uh, magnitude, right? Because bidirectional nga siya. Oh, sabi ni Freudian, parang infinity, so that's another way on how you look at it. If uh, naka-sideways, no? Yung iyong antena. Okay, mukha siyang infinity. But, di ba, usually, ang zero degrees natin is yung nasa taas, kaya mas mukha siyang eight. Pero infinity, that's also correct if you're gonna look it at the other way around. Next natin is Marconi antenna. So, Marconi antenna, guys, okay, that is also a practical antenna. Okay? The Marconi antenna is, sorry, Okay, the Marconi antenna is a practical antenna. Uh, siya lang yung kaya sa isang antenna na ang length ay lambda over 4. Okay? Kasi nga, di ba, naalala nyo from the previous lecture that uh, the, the length of the antenna must be multiples of lambda over 2. Lambda over 2 being the minimum. Lambda over 2, lambda, 3 lambda over 2, 2 lambda, something like that. But Marconi, uh, Marconi antenna is allowed to have a length of lambda over 4. Why? Because of the... Uh, mirror image principle. So, nakatayo siya sa ground, guys. So, lambda over 4 lang length niya kasi uh, nagkakaroon siya ng mirror image sa ground. So, in effect, para ding lambda over 2 yung length niya. But physically, okay, uh, lambda over 4 lang talaga siya. Okay? Yung mismong antena mo. Yung length na antena mo is lambda over 4. But it creates a virtual image on the ground na lambda over 4 din. So, that's why parang lambda over 2 pa din siya. Okay? And that is only possible for a Marconi antenna. Why? Because Marconi antenna is vertically polarized. So pag vertically polarized, ibig sabihin yung signal mo patayo, di ba? With respect to the ground. And also, the application of Marconi antenna is only uh, focused on ground wave propagation. So doon lang siya specifically pwede gamitin. Kasi baka isipin nyo, sir, edi yung gawin ko sa, ano, ang gawin ko sa... Uh, hertz antenna or the sa half wave dipole itayo ko na lang din sa ground sir okay pwede naman but it will act okay uh, as a marconi antenna in that case all right ganun yung idea niya but if you want to use it as a half wave dipole kailangan lambda over 2 yung length niya okay kasi ang marconi antenna very specific ver for vertically polarized signals lang siya sa ground surface so in short ground wave propagation so yung mga am radio stations uh, mga marconi antenna yung gamit nila Okay? Uh, by the way, no? Okay. We have here the folded dipole. Folded dipole is basically a half-wave dipole. Kaya lang, uh, folded siya. So, wala siyang effect, no? With regards to the electrical length. Lambda over 2 pa din siya. But what changes, uh, I mean, the radiation pattern is also the same. What changes is the uh, radiation resistance or the feed impedance. So, pag gumamit ka ng folded dipole, ang magiging feed impedance mo, 292 ohms na. no? Uh, as compared to before, na 73 ohms lang siya. Okay. So, what's the purpose of that? What do you think is the purpose uh, of using a folded dipole okay, instead of a half-wave dipole? Kasi technically, the radiation pattern, the gain, everything is the same. What only changes is the feed impedance. So, bakit kailangan pa natin ng folded dipole? Ba't kailangan pa natin ng 73N square? Uh, kaya rin, dalawang fold siya. So, kaya naging 292. No? Kung dalawang fold po. 
So, kung tatlong fold, uh, <laughs> ano ba yun? <laughs> ano ba yung 3 square? 9. No? Multiply nyo na lang. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, guys? Okay, so, bakit kaya? What do you think is the purpose of using a folded dipole? If the gain is the same. If the radiation pattern is the same. Okay, what do you think is the uh, purpose of that? So, ang baga, para saan siya? Ano yung purpose niya? Di ba? Kasi yung gain niya, the same lang. Yung radiation pattern niya is the same lang. So, ang nagbago lang yung feed impedance. So, what's the what's the point no of using a folded dipole over a half-wave dipole? When will you use half-wave? When we will use? When will you use a folded dipole? So, nga guys. So, uh, rack up your memory, no? Uh, based dun sa mga uh, pinag-aralan natin before. Oh, wala na. Kapos na. Wala nang wala nang answer. Wala lang trip lang, sir. Trip trip lang. <laughs> Pag gusto kong gaya ng feed impedance ko, uh, folded gagamitin ko. Pag uh, hindi ko trip sa araw na ito, so half wave dipole lang gagamitin ko. <laughs> so anyone guys, na may idea about uh, about that. Actually, alam niyo yan, na discuss na natin yan before. Hindi niyo lang siguro napapansin or di lang kayo aware na isa yun sa mga application ng mga diniscuss natin uh, before. Can anyone uh, answer the question? Okay, dami natin sa class kayo. So, 41. 40. Minus 1 ako. Okay, so anyone na... Oo. Oh, yan. Anyone na... Uh, May answer? Okay, we have an answer here. Okay, characteristic impedance. Correct, but in what way? Okay. So, tama naman yung sinabi mo, pero kindly explain. Okay, very good, no? Ayan, di ba? Kasi remember guys, no? Uh, you have a transmission line. Naalala nyo yun, di ba? Okay, meron kang transmission line. So, you have the transmission line, meron yung characteristic impedance. Now, ang load natin usually is the antenna. So, di ba, uh, for maximum power transfer to happen, dapat parehas or match, no, yung characteristic impedance mo dun sa load mo. So, that's why, guys, no, uh, you will use a folded dipole, okay, uh, if your characteristic impedance is high, di ba? You will use half wave dipole if your characteristic impedance is low. For example, ang cable mo is coaxial cable. Usually, di ba, ang mga coaxial cable nasa uh, 70 something, nasa 50 to 70 ohms ang kanilang ano, characteristic impedance. So, ang magandang gamitin doon, half wave dipole lang. Kung parallel wire transmission line naman ang gamit mo, no? So, matataas ang, input, uh, matataas ang characteristic impedance doon, right? So, that's the reason why you need to use a folded dipole for that. Para uh, hindi masyadong malayo no? yung impedance. Kunyari, 300 ohms yung characteristic impedance mo. If you will use a uh, halfway dipole which has a 73 ohms feed impedance, mm, laki, ng, ano, laki ng mismatch, right? So, ibig sabihin, malaki ang ano nun, uh, mga losses, di ba? Kasi nga, di ba, for maximum power transfer to occur, uh, dapat uh, parehas ang input, im ang, sorry, ang characteristic impedance sa load impedance. Okay? So, if that's the case, it's much better if you gonna use the folded dipole. Kasi mas malapit ang 292 kaysa kay 300. So, uh, pa nag-impedance matcher ka, impedance matching ka, hindi ka masyadong mahihirapan because hindi naman masyadong magkalayo yung minamatch mong impedance. Not unlike, if you gonna match 73 kay 300, medyo mas malayo yun. Okay? So, that's the purpose of that. Naintindihan nyo ba? O hindi nyo na naalala yung, ano, <laughs> yung concept ng characteristic impedance? Nagagets nyo ba, guys? 
Oh, wala na. Nalimutan na po. Okay. Yan. Nalimutan na ng iba. No? Mm. So, okay lang naman. Nalimutan nyo na siya. But uh, make sure that uh, you will remember that one no? pagdating ng exam. Okay? Okay. Next natin is horn antenna. Okay, so horn antenna guys, okay, usually we use that no type of antenna in conjunction of a waveguide. So what is waveguide? We'll be discussing that next week, okay? So next week no, uh ituturo ko sa inyo yung ano, yung waveguide, no? Uh, because that is under uh the, our last topic which is uh yung last topic kasi natin guys is microwave uh, communications. So sa microwave comms, no? So doon natin didiskus si waveguide. So for now, tandaan niyo muna na pag uh, ang transmission line mo ay waveguide. Usually, ang ginagamit mo ay horn antenna. Okay? So, tandaan nyo yan, guys, no? Uh, ang waveguide kasi is basically similar to transmission line. Uh, the difference is uh, the frequency, no? So, hindi kasi effective ang transmission line sa high-frequency transmission. Pero ang waveguide, very effective siya in that sense. Okay? So, ito yung mga ano niya, no? Uh, pardon for this one, no? Hindi ko pala na-correct. It's supposed to be DE, uh, theta E, guys. Ah, uh, di ba DH to? So, theta H. So, ito, DE, theta E. Ha? Pakicorrect na lang, guys, sa inyong notes. So, supposed to be theta E. Okay? So, ito yung ating uh, mga beam width, no? Ito yung beam width ng ating horn antenna. And this is the gain of the horn antenna. Okay? Beam width, no? Baka nalimutan nyo na. Beam width is the uh, angle, no? Between the half power points of your radiation pattern. But technically, what beam width gives us is how narrow uh, our uh, signal is, no? Kasi pag narrow, guys, it means unidirectional siya. Okay? And the idea is uh, the dapat unidirectional, di ba? Uh, for a better uh, transmission. Next natin is the parabolic antenna. So on your screens is uh, an example of the parabolic antenna. So parabolic antenna is one of the best antenna, guys. Okay? Uh, at usually, ito rin yung ginagamit natin sa microwave communications. Okay? So ito yung formula ng gain niya, efficiency times pi d over lambda square, and that it's beam width 70 lambda over d. So kanina, guys, dalawa yung ano niya, yung beam width niya, kasi rectangular yung cross-section niya. So, side view kasi itong nasa screen nyo, guys, eh. Pero yung cross-sectional view niya, uh, rectangle po. No? So, dalawa yung beam width niya. Ito, bilog, eh. So, isa lang yung beam width niya. ba diba? Bilog kasi siya. Setting so, formula, 70 lambda over D. Okay? We also have the helical antenna. So, helical antenna, guys, uh, this is a very special type of antenna because we use this, no, uh, for circularly polarized signals. Okay? So, mga circularly polarized waves. Okay, naalala nyo ba from uh, our uh, lesson last uh, time about the circular, about the different types of polarization? Horizontal polarization, vertical polarization, we also have the circular polarization. Uh, ito kasi guys, there's a phenomenon na nangyayari if your signal passes no, uh, beyond the ionosphere. Okay, so ang phenomenon na yun ay tinatawag na Faraday rotation. Okay, Faraday rotation. So, anong ibig sabihin ng Faraday rotation? Kunyari, ang signal mo ay vertically polarized or horizontally polarized. But when it passes no, to a certain uh, layer in the ionosphere, okay, the tendency of your signal is maging circularly polarized. Mula sa vertical, iikot siya. Mula sa horizontal, iikot siya. So, if that's the case, no, ano na siya? Magiging circularly polarized signal na siya. And, okay, ang tawag doon sa phenomenon na yon is the Faraday rotation. Okay? Faraday rotation. Now, kung circularly polarized na yung signal mo, paano mo i-receive yun? Dapat circularly polarized din. You get what I'm saying? So, kung naging circularly polarized na siya, di ba sabi ko nga sa inyo, no, dapat your antenna will match the polarization of your signal. Kung horizontally polarized, horizontally polarized. Kung vertically polarized, vertically polarized. Kung circularly polarized, pwede naman ding vertical ang pang-receive mo. Pero hindi 100%. You get what I mean? Kasi umiikot siya. Pwede ring horizontally polarized ang pang-receive mo. Pero again, hindi yun magiging 100% because umiikot siya. So why not use a circularly polarized uh, tawag dito, uh, antenna as well? So that's the purpose of the helical antenna. 
Okay? Uh, usually, ginagamit lang natin to sa satellite communications kasi doon lang naman prevalent yung effect ng paraday rotation. Once it passes the ionosphere, papunta na sa outer space, umiikot na siya. So that's why yung mga receiver natin sa mga satellites is mga helical antenna which are uh, which can receive circularly polarized signals effectively. Okay? Yun yung idea natin. Okay. Uh, don't be confused with the satellite na ano ah, with the satellite na ginagamit sa Waze. Okay? Iba yung mga satellite na yun guys, no? Uh, yung satellite na tinutukoy natin dito ay mga communication satellite. Nakita na kayo guys ng mga OV band? Yung sa mga ano, sa mga sa mga ano, mga nagbo-broadcast. Nakita na kayo nun before. Usually madalas diyan sa may ano, sa may UN, sa may Supreme Court, 'di ba? Usually madalas doon yung mga OB ban ng mga ano eh, mga TV stations. Nakita na kayo nun, guys, nung may face-to-face -face classes pa sa mga dumadaan sa TAF. Usually pag may mga pangyayari diyan sa mga Supreme Court, nakatambay sila diyan. Eh. Nakita na kayo ng ganun, guys. O hindi? O wala kayong pakialam dati. Hindi <laughs> pa nakita nun, guys. Yung mga ano, yung mga ban ng mga ano, mga OB ban ng tawag doon eh, mga van ng mga uh, ng mga broadcaster. Hindi pa nakita nun. Hindi pa, talaga. Hmm. Hindi pa. How about the others? Hindi pa. Yung parang ano siya. O, oh, yun. Yung mga sticker ng GMA. Di ba? Yung mga van na may sticker ng GMA. Tapos parang may mga equipment sa loob nun. Di pa kayo nakakita nun, guys? O, oh, yan. O, no? oh, yan. May nakakita na daw. Yung may van na may antena. Yes. Yeah, tama. O, oh, nakita na kayo nun, di ba? Yun. So, yung mga yun, di ba? Pag nagre-report yun sa television, may nakalagay, di ba? Live via satellite. Okay? Live via satellite. Kasi nga, Binabato nila sa ano yon sa satellite yung signal galing sa van nila. Yun. So, doon yun yung mga live via satellite na mga broadcasting. Okay, ano napapansin nyo sa mga live via satellite na broadcasting? Kaya re, uh, ini-interview sila na ba, di ba, sa GMA, for, for instance. May nagre-report doon, di ba? Tapos, meron kausap nila na sa studio. Okay, di ba, yung mga news anchor. Ano napapansin nyo sa mga live via satellite na ano? Live via satellite na... Uh, interviews or news broadcast. Yung may mga naka-OV ban. Ano napapansin niyo doon? Kaya rin, yeah, de delay, di ba? Yeah, delay. O, delay siya, di ba? O, bakit siya nade-delay? Uh, because uh, galing siya sa satellite, malayo yung distance, mataas ang, anong term natin doon? Mataas ang, yung delay, ano nga uli ang term natin for the delay? Mataas ang, ano yung specific term natin doon? Sa delay, mataas ang, ano yung specific term natin doon? Very good, may delay, di ba? Pero ano, ano yung term natin doon for the delay of that? Nagsisimula sa letter L. Latency, very good. Okay, mataas ang latency niya. So, dyan ginagamit yung helical antenna. Ha? Helical antenna yung mga pang-receive. Okay, pang-receive sa satellite. Oh, kasi nga, because of the Faraday rotation. Alright? Iba yung satellite ng Waze. Ang satellite ng Waze, GPS. Okay, anong tawag sa mga satellite na yun? yung mga GPS na satellite yung ginagamit sa Waze hindi yun yung ginagamit hindi yun yung pinag hindi yun yung may ano helical antenna yung mga antenna na ay yung mga satellite ng GPS mga navigational satellites yun hindi sila communication satellites okay iba yung mga communication satellite guys uh, yung mga communication satellite ay mas mataas okay kesa sa mga uh, navigational satellites yung mga, kumbaga, ano no, ang distance ng mga communication satellite ay 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth. Ayan. So, yung mga ano, mga ano lang yun, as around 1,000 kilometers lang. 500 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers lang yung distance ng mga uh, GPS. Kaya medyo mas accurate ang GPS, kumpara, I mean, mas mababa ang latency ng mga GPS kesa dun sa uh, communication satellite. Okay. So, I would like to talk, talk, talk more about satellites no? because that is a very interesting topic. Uh, kaya lang, uh, hindi kasi siya kasama sa scope natin. Maybe sa ano, uh, next uh, year, uh, we'll have a subject called ECE Essentials. Uh, I'll be discussing that na lang doon. No? So, I think I'll be your teacher there no? sa ECE Essentials. No? Yung mga importanteng bagay na malaman nyo sa ECE before you graduate. Okay? <laughs> Yan, so, I like that subject. Okay. Now, let's talk about the rhombic antenna. So, rhombic antenna is non-resonant antenna. Okay? We will say non-resonant. Lahat ang natutunan nyo so far, hindi applicable kay rhombic antenna. Hindi kasi siya nagre-resonate. 
'di ba? Uh, magre-resonate siya pag lambda over 2 yung length niya, 'di ba? So ito yung obvious antenna, uh, nagta-transmit siya ng at nagre-receive siya ng signal pero hindi resonance ang idea. Okay? Wala nang ganyan ngayon, guys. Yan, tinan nyo, no, yung pinagkuna ko ng picture niya, lumang-luma pa. Ginamit siya nung 1937, guys. Ayan. Ayan. Uh, article siya from 2015, no, discussing the rhombic antenna na meron nung 1937. Ganyan siya kalaki, guys. Itong, ano na to, nakita nyo yung parang diamond na yon. Yan yung rhombic antenna before. Ayan. Laki, no? Hindi hmm. di pa ako nakita niya in real life, guys, no? Kasi hindi naman nagkakalayo yung mga edad natin, okay? So, hindi ako nabuhay noong mga panahon na ginagamit pa si Rombic Antenna. Pero by, by the books no, na nababasa natin and the articles na nababasa natin, parang kasing laki siya ng quadrangle natin sa TUP. Ganong kalaki. O, imagine mo, antena mo, ganong kalaki. Eh, mga antena nga natin ngayon, ganun na lang kaliliit, di ba? O. So that's the that's the thing, no? So that's only uh, history, no? The rhombic antenna. Turnstile antenna on the other hand, okay? Turnstile antenna on the other hand is uh, is an effort on how on ano no, how can we produce okay, a ano no, omnidirectional antenna, no? So parang gagayahin natin yung ano guys, yung half ah, sorry, gagawin gagayahin natin si Uh, tawag dito, isotropic antenna. So, ang, gagaw ang ginagawa sa turnstile antenna is magagamit ng dalawang half-wave dipole na 90 degrees with each other. So, that's the turnstile antenna. So, ito yung ng radiation pattern niya, no? Uh, originally, guys, di ba, parang H siya. Tinan nyo, guys, di ba? Parang H siya. So, tapos, infinity naman yung isa. Yung parang sagot ni Froyland kanina, di ba? Infinity. Tapos, yung isa, eight patayo. So, pag cross mo with each other, so, parang flower, no? Uh, Ganda, boy. Bulaklak. I like it, no? Kikay na kikay. Ayan. <laughs> so, siyang flower. Okay. Uh, ang, ang goal dito is mamimik yung ano, mamimik yung uh, radiation pattern ng isang omnidirectional antenna. So, look what happened, no? Anong gain nung ano, half-wave dipole? 1.64. But nung ginawa siyang turnstile, bumaba yung gain niya, naging 1.15 na lang. What do you think is the reason? Sige nga, if you're following the discussion so far, bakit pumaba yung gain? Eh, dalawang antena na ngayon ginamit natin dyan. Sige nga, guys. Di ba dati 1.64 nung figure of 8 lang siya? Nung nagdagdag tayo ng, ano, ng half-wave dipole pa, oh, bumaba yung gain. Eh, dalawang antena na nga ginamit natin. What do you think is the reason? Bakit bumaba yung gain in that case? Okay, kasi mas naging ano siya, mas nalayo siya sa pagiging unidirectional. Remember, our goal is to make that unidirectional. Di ba dati, ano na lang siya, no? bidirectional siya. Kaso nung nagdagdag tayo, naging ano, parang ano na siya, no? for four directions na siya. Di ba? Instead na upward, downward lang, meron na ring left and right. So, lumayo siya lalo sa pagiging unidirectional. So, that, so what happened is, buha ba yung gain niya? Tama? Ayun, no? So, always keep that in mind, no? The idea about the gain, okay? And the uh, uh, radiation pattern. Kailangan pointed, okay? Kailangan pointed ang radiation pattern mo para masabi mo na mataas ang gain niya. That's the thing. So, ito hindi pointed, right? Okay? So, hindi siya, uh, ano, hindi siya maganda in that sense. Okay. So, I think uh, we're now ready, no? To answer some uh, review questions. Okay, again, let's do this. Okay, first, guided problem-solving question. Uh, actually, this is similar to uh, what you had in your uh, midterm exam. Uh, kaya lang sa midterm exam, hindi natin sinulat yung type nung, uh, sinulat natin yung gain nung isang antena. So dito, guys, uh, it's just the same. Uh, what we're gonna do here is the same what we did in the midterm exam. Uh, the problem nga lang dito, dapat alam nyo na yung mga gains ng antena kasi sinabi na lang elementary doublet. Okay, let's do this. An elementary doublet is capable of radiating at an input of 1 kilowatt. If you are to replace this with a rhombic antenna, what should its gain? Okay, in, D, in dB, to be able to radiate same field strength at the same distance with half input power. Okay, so ang formula, ang, ang, ang ano natin, field strength, no? So sabi daw, yung field strength ng una ay equal dun sa field strength ng pangalawa. Okay. So, field strength nung una ay equal dun sa field strength ng pangalawa. Okay. So, kasi same field strength. Mas same field strength yung ano yun, no? electric field strength. So, same field strength. So, equal siya. Naalala nyo ba yung formula ng field strength? So, square root ng 
uh, 30. Okay, power transmit 1. Gain on transmitting antenna 1. Divided by distance 1. Okay, equal sa ano, square root ng ano, 30. Okay, PT2. Okay, gain on transmitting antenna 2. Okay, over distance ng 2. Okay? Now guys, may mga values tayo dyan. So, ano yung ano natin? PT1 natin. So, we have square root ng 30 times 1,000. Kasi 1 kilowatt daw eh. Tapos, okay, uh, GT1 natin is the elementary doublet. What's the gain of the elementary doublet? From our lesson guys, what's the gain of the elementary doublet? 1.5. So, just replace this with 1.5. Or divided by D1. So, since same daw yung dalawa, pero hindi sinabi. So, let's say D na lang yung distance natin. Okay? Equal square root of. Okay, we have 30. Okay, what is PT2? So, kalahati daw ng input power. Diba? Sabi rito, uh, with half input power. So, kung kalahati ang input power natin, that would be 500. Ayan. Tapos yung isa, hindi natin alam. Sabihin natin GT2 na lang. Okay? Divided by? Okay, again, hindi sinabi yung ating distance, but according sa problem, uh, the antenna will radiate at the same distance. The same, same, same distance. So it means that ang D natin, ang D2 natin, will also be D. Okay, tapos, cancel lang guys. Bang, bang, cancel yun. 30, cancel din. D, cancel din. And what is GT2? Okay, 3. Yan. Pero hindi pa tayo tapos because according sa problem, we need to get the gain in dB. So, how are we going to do that? So, hence. Yan, lagyan nyo ng hence guys, no? Uh, ito yung ano, no? parang uh, uh, keyword natin para sabihin tayo ay magaling. Okay? <laughs> Charot lang. So hence, okay, so we have GT2. Okay, pag sinabing DB is just the same as DBI. So 10 log ng ano guys. Again, pag sinabing uh, tawag dito, pag sinabi sa problem na kailangan natin in decibel, it's just the same as DBI. So sa natin i-divide ang 3. Di ba pag DBI, anong reference? Again, pag DB lang nakalagay, parang DBI din yun. Ha? So, what's your reference pag DBI? Sa so, atin, divide yung 3 sa so 1. Okay, guys? Yan. Kasi, uh, not unlike others, sa antena, dapat lagi kang merong reference. Okay, so what is our GT2, guys? 10 log ng 3. 4 point? Hindi ko pala sure. <laughs> ah, tama, tama, tama. 4.77 DBI. Okay? You may or may not write the I. It's just the same. Okay? Yan. Huwag natin sulat kasi sabi lang naman is DB. Pero again, DB is the same as DBI pagdating sa antena. Hindi kasi pwedeng walang reference, guys. No? So, kahit tama yung sagot nyo, mamalian natin kayo, guys. No? Pag hindi nyo ginawang, 10 log ng 3 over 1. So, dapat kasi laging may divide by 1 because remember, we should always keep in mind that the gain of the antenna is always reference. Okay? With comparison. Okay? Kumbaga, hindi kasi siya providing a gain on its own. Kumbaga, kino-compare mo lang kung gano'n siya kaganda kumpara dun sa mas pangit na antena kaysa sa kanya. Okay? Naintindihan guys, kaya lagi may over 1. Kahit na nonsense naman, ba? Ba't mo pa di-divide by 1? Eh, yun din naman yun. I would just like to uh, you guys to keep in mind that the antenna gain is always referenced. Okay? Naintindihan po. So, I hope you understand, no? Uh, yung mga simple things such as that. Okay, let's do this one. Calculate the beam width of a helical antenna having a diameter of 80 millimeters and a pitch of 62.5 millimeters. Uh, the antenna operates at 1.2 gigahertz and has 8 turns. So, uh, beam width, may formula lang tayo guys kay beam width, no? Naalala nyo pa for helical antenna. That is uh, 52 lambda over pi d. Okay, tapos uh, square root ng, ano guys, lambda over ns. Ayan, no? So, 52 lambda over 5d square root ng lambda over ns. Okay, so we have uh, 52. Okay, lambda, no? So, what is our lambda? Dapat pala kinalculate. Sige, diretsuin ko na guys, ha? 
Yan. Pero uh, in practice, is much better to calculate lambda first. Pero dahil naisulat ko na, panindigan na natin. Okay? 3 times 10 to the 8, okay, divided by what the hell our frequency is, 1.2 gigahertz. 1.2 times 10 to the 9. Again guys, uh, uh, it's much better to get the frequency first. Pero nandito na eh, no? So, go na lang. 80 millimeters, 80 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, tapos square root ng lambda. Okay, so good thing dito, no? Sa, ano? Uh, class notebook, pwede lang natin basta kopyahin ang ating sinulat kanina. I uh, divided by NS. Number of terms is 8. And S is the pitch, guys, no? So, 62.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay. So, what is our answer? Yan. So, tingnan natin kung ang section nyo ay magkakamali, no? Yung section A, no? So, they made a mistake here. Okay. In giving the unit, no? Of the uh, beam width. So, titingnan ko kung kayo ay makakatama. Let us see, no? Kung tama kayo o mali rin kayo sa unit ng ating beam width. Uy, kumpit niya. Alam mo ang mental ko yan, guys. No? Mahirap yan. Hindi ko kaya mentally niyan. 52 lambda over pi d, square root ng lambda over ns. So, pakitulungan nga ako, guys. Can you solve that one? 52 lambda over pi d, square root ng lambda over ns. Oy! Yung lalabas, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have 36 point. Okay, very good, no? So, kasi ang tagal nyo sumagot, eh. Napilitan tuloy sumagot ang lodi nating lahat, no? Yan, ganyan talaga, no? Yan, save the class, di ba? 36 point. Okay, 58 degrees. Ayan, no? Alam niyo yun, talagang ano, eh, na-prostrate na, na si Pababear sa inyo, eh, no? Ang tagal nyo daw sumagot. Kailangan pa ba daw every question siya ang mauunang sumagot? Ayan, no? Na uh, dadidisappoint si Pababear sa inyo, no? Ayan, kadamihan ng mga sumasagot, guys, no? Uh, hindi nyo nilalagay yung unit. So, correct, no? The answer is degrees ang unit ng ating beam width. Okay, hindi po 36.58 lang, ha? Pakilagay po, no? 36.58 degrees. Okay? Yan. Sagot nung isang section, nung yung, uh, yung 3A, sagot nila meters. Okay? 36.58 meters. Beam width, guys, is angle, ha? Ayan, no? Ayan. Okay? Alright. Very good. 36.58 degrees. So, lodi talaga natin si Mr. Pababear, no? Pwede mong bigyan ng palakpak yun. Pwede naman, no? Palakpak dito. Applause. Ayan. No? Iba talaga ang ano, no? Oh, si Mr. Pababear. Wala eh, pinilit nyo nga eh. Ang tagal nyo sumagot daw eh. Kaya siya na daw ang sumagot. Okay, Lodi. Ano? Yan, next time daw ha. Huwag nyo siyang hayaang unang sumagot, no? Yan. Tino mo nung sumagot siya, no? Nagsigayahan na lang kayong lahat, no? <laughs> Charot. Joke lang guys, no? Ito mo, nagalit ulit si, ano, no? si AJ, no? Ginawa niya talagang degrees, no? Yan. Yan. Ginalit niya eh, no? Binigyan, nilatagan tuloy tayo ng degrees talaga. <laughs> okay, let's go, uh, let's go back here, guys. Okay, next problem. A parabolic antenna has a diameter of 3 meters, an efficiency of 60%, okay, and operates at a frequency of 4 gigahertz. Calculate this gain in dBi, round off to the nearest whole number. So, what's the formula for the gain of the parabolic antenna? So, gain ng parabolic antenna is the efficiency times the quantity of pi d, Okay, over lambda, okay, square. Ayan. So, lahat naman ay given, direct substitution lang, guys. So, 60% ang efficiency, so 0.6. Okay, multiplied by pi. The diameter is 3 meters and the frequency is 4 gigahertz. So, we have 3 times 10 to the 8 over 4 times 10 to the 9. Okay? Tapos, e square lang daw natin itong lahat. Yan. So, may sagot tayo dito, guys. Uh, but actually, uh, our answer, 
So you have an answer here, right? May answer ka sa gain. But sabi sa problem, we need to get our gain in DBI. So whatever your answer here is, kunin nyo lang in DBI. So hence, okay? So whatever your answer here, if you want to get the gain in DBI, it is simply equal sa 10 log ng ano guys, 10 log nung nakuha nyo doon, divide by 1. Okay, so what is our gain in DBI? And remember, according to the problem, you need to round off your answer to the nearest whole number. So, abang sinasolve nyo to, guys, no? Uh, the efficiency is always given, okay, in our exam. Pero in the board exam kasi, guys, minsan, hindi po binibigay ang efficiency. So, always remember this. Kung naka-encounter kayo ng problem about the parabolic antenna, and hindi given sa efficiency, okay, you, you should use 60%. Okay? 60%, guys, no? Ang gagamitin kung hindi mo siya, kung hindi siya nabigay. Okay? But in our exam, guys, no, uh, I'll make sure that uh, I'll be able to give the uh, the efficiency. Pero yun nga, sabi ko nga, no, sa board exam, guys, minsan yung examiner natin, okay, hindi siya. Uh, binibigay, no? So that's why uh, we need to know that the efficiency is typically 60%. Unless, okay, unless uh, the topic is under the microwave communications. Because if the topic is under microwave communications, you'll be, able, uh, you'll be using a different formula for that. Okay? Yan. So, sa mga nag-answer ng DB, that's also correct. Uh, but please, uh, please follow what uh, the problem is asking. If it asks for DBI, then you should write DBI. Although, that's also correct. 40 DB. Okay? Pakilagay na lang yung I, guys. Lalo-lalo na at tayo ay nasa canvas, di ba? If you put the DB lang at DBI pala dapat, so mamamali kayo. Di ba? Nakuha ba? No. Although tama na may mga sumagot ang decibel lang, that's also correct. But please put uh, DB. Okay? Mali ba sa answer ni Gideon, no? Siya lang mali sa lahat, okay? No. <laughs> Alain na sagot mo, pre. In DBI nga eh. Okay? So, 40 DBI. Ang layo na sagot ni Gideon. Hmm. Baka lag si Gideon, no? Okay. Ang layo. I think yung 9-4 or something, uh, uh, nasagot niya na, uh, bida lang daw, no? Para doble yung sagot. Okay? Nasagot na daw niya pala. Oh, sorry, sorry. Churi, churi. Okay? But may nag-angry dun sa sagot ni ano, Miss Deluna kanina. Grabe, sinong galit kay Miss Deluna? May nag-angry. Uh, angry, no? Sino kaya yun? Biglang tinanggal, eh. O, tinanggal na rin yung like ngayon, no? <laughs> Sino kaya yung, ano, no? Nantitrip ng angry and like dito, no? Okay? Pero nag-gets na, guys. nag naman. Again, uh, follow what uh, the problem is asking, no? If it asks for DB, you write DB. If it asks for DBI, you write DBI, even, even though they are the same. Okay, let's have this one, guys. Determine the gain of a horn antenna, okay, with the following parameters. So, DE is 7.5 cm, DH is 2.5 cm, and uh, frequency is 10 gigahertz. All right, guys. So, what will be the gain, no, of our uh, horn antenna? Uh, may formula lang tayo dyan, right? So, what is our formula there? So, it's simply equal sa 7.5, okay, DE, uh, DH over lambda square. Okay, so this one is easy. So, 7.5 times DE, 7.5 then. So, 7.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, multiplied by uh, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, over lambda square. So that is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 over the frequency is 10 gigahertz, 10 times 10 to the 9. Okay, tapos square lang. So what is our gain, guys? Okay, so yeah. You have 15 point something there. So, whatever your answer here, so, kailangan daw in DBI siya. So, it is simply equal sa gain in DBI. So, 10 log ng 15 point something over 1. Okay? So, what will be our gain in DBI?
Okay, we have 11.94 dBi. Tama ba? 94. Okay, 94 dBi. Alright, guys. Okay, no? So, yeah, that's it, no? For the uh, fundamental antenna types. So, let's proceed sa next topic natin. Okay, so our next topic, guys, is ano, no? uh, antenna arrays. Okay, so uh, antenna arrays basically is ano, no? a set of multiple connected antennas which work together as a single antenna. So what's the purpose of using an antenna array? Para saan ba si antenna array? So matanong ko nga kayo, guys, no? uh, naalala niyo yung lesson natin uh, last, last year? Or last year ba? I forgot. Uh, yung lesson natin sa ECAD about the amplifiers. Uh, I've asked you before, no? I've taught you this before. How can we say that a certain uh, amplifier is good? Di ba? Mataas ang gain, mataas ang input impedance, mababa ang output impedance. So pagdating sa antenna naman, guys, no? what do you think is the criteria on how can we say that an antenna is good? Similar to what we did in the amplifiers, what do you think are the criteria that should be met para masabi natin na ang antena natin ay maganda? Ano dapat ang criteria? Siya yeah, guys, di ba naalala nyo yun no, sa amplifier? Mataas ang gain, mataas ang input impedance, mababa ang output impedance. So those are the things that uh, we need to consider if we want to say if a certain amplifier is good or bad. So for the antenna naman, no, ano ang kanyang mga ano, criteria? How can we say that a certain antenna is good? Okay, high gain, high directive gain. Okay, that's good. What else? Mataas ang gain, mataas ang feed impedance. Actually, not really about the feed impedance. Uh, the feed impedance, guys, uh, kailangan lang siyang i-match dun, uh, dun sa characteristic impedance ng transmission line mo. So, hindi kasali yung about the feed impedance. So, mataas ang gain, ano pa, guys? Bukod sa mataas ang gain, ano pa dapat ang characteristic, no? How can we say a certain antenna is good? Again, it's not about the feed impedance. As long as match ang feed impedance mo with your transmission line, that is good. Okay? So, kung mababa ang feed impedance mo, just make sure that mababa din ang transmission line na gagamitin mo. Or vice versa. Okay? Uh, what else? Bukod sa high gain, high directive gain. So, ano pa? Bukod dun. Ang criteria, how can we say that a certain uh, antenna is good? Yeah, you need to know that answer to understand the purpose of antenna array. And you need to answer that question. Uh, so that uh, you would actually know the explanation. Uh, why do we bother no? uh, using antenna arrays? Anyone? Yan. So, bukod sa mataas na gain, ano pa kaya? Okay, so we have here, maliit ang beam width. Okay, so that's actually correct. No? But uh, what's supposed to be the correct uh, adjective ba tawag doon? <laughs> adjective for that. Okay, adjective nga ba yun? Okay, adjective. Yeah, narrow beam width, very good. No? So, uh, the criteria, okay, that uh, uh, where, when can we say that a certain antenna is good is if it has a high directive gain and a narrow beam width. Actually, it's here, guys, no? Basahin natin. This is used to achieve higher gain and narrower beam width. What the hell? It's already on your faces, guys, no? Ready to bite you like a snake in the grass. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know, higher gain, narrower beam width. Ayan yung criteria natin. Okay, compared to a single element antenna. So the purpose of, okay, the purpose of uh, using antenna arrays is to achieve, okay, higher gain and narrower beam width. Okay? Uh, kasi there are, sometimes, uh, you cannot actually change, no? Uh, the uh, beam width of your antenna by nature na mismo, yun na yung beam width niya. Okay, kung baga mahirap na siyang baguhin si beam width. No? So that's why no instead of uh, changing your antenna pa, okay? Physically, what we do is we just use antenna array. 
Okay? Because if you use antenna array, you can actually control no your gain as well as your beam width. It's more of the beam width to be honest, no? Uh it's more on the beam width. Uh, the, the, the main reason that we use antenna array is to control the beam width, to make it narrower. Alright? To make it more unidirectional. Halimbawa, si upwave dipole, bidirectional siya, di ba? But by using, okay, it, in a, in a form of antenna array, okay, it can actually be unidirectional. So that's the idea. Nagagets nyo ba ang purpose ng antenna array? Okay, para ano no, para mapataas natin yung gain pero moreover, uh, more so para mapanarong natin lalo ang beam width niya. You understand po? Uy, guys, you understand everyone. Naintindihan po yung purpose ng antenna array. Kung bakit merong antenna array. No, it's more on controlling the beam width para mas maging narrow ang beam width mo actually. Because the gain is actually dependent dun sa mga formula na pinagagawa natin kanina eh. Di naman mababago na yun. It's more on ano na lang, controlling the beam width. Kasi kailangan maging mas narrow siya. Halimbawa, halfway dipole, 1.64 talaga yung gain niya. Pero pag gumamit ka ng antenna array guys, magiging unidirectional siya instead of bidirectional or having a figure of 8 uh, radiation pattern. Mamaya di-discuss natin yun. Ngayon, ang antenna array mo, syempre may elements siya. Ang itsura ng antenna array, guys, is yung mga typical na antenna na nakikita natin. No, marami siyang elements. Usually, yung mga antenna ng television sets natin, those are antenna arrays. So, we have two different antenna array elements. So, the first one is the driven element. So, when we say driven element, yung element ng antenna array na yun is directly connected to the transmission line. Okay, driven element siya. Meaning na connect siya sa transmission line, meaning nagra-radiate siya ng signal, meaning nagra-radiate siya ng power. Okay? But, hindi lahat ng uh, elements ay driven element. Some elements, guys, is tinatawag na parasitic element. So, ano naman ang parasitic element? So, parasitic element is the element in antenna array na hindi directly connected sa transmission line. And they can only receive energy by a coupling. So, wala silang energy by themselves. Kasi hindi sila connected sa transmission line eh. Okay? Naintindihan guys? Alright. So, yung sabihin, meron din tayong driven array and parasitic array. So, when we say driven array, lahat ng elements mo, driven element. Okay? Pag parasitic array guys, okay, uh, one or more elements niya ay parasitic. Okay? Hindi naman ano, di ba? Again, ha? <laughs> yung iba kasi parang ano eh, no? Ayan. Uh, nagkakamali eh. Pag sinabi kong driven array, lahat ng ano, elements niya ay driven element. Pag sinabi natin parasitic array, lahat ba ng elements niya ay parasitic? No! Kasi kung lahat ng elements niya ay parasitic, gago, paano, paano gagana yung antena mo? Di ba? <laughs> Wala na ako next sa transmission line, antena lang talaga. Ano gawin mo? Hampas mo sa ulo mo. Di ba? <laughs> you get the idea, guys. Okay? Yung iba kasi ganun eh. Ah, pag lahat pala ng ano, element na connect sa uh, transmission line, driven array yun. E pag lahat pala, ang parasitic array, therefore, lahat ng elements, hindi na connect sa transmission line. Uh, hindi naman imposible naman yung guys. Hindi na yung gagana pagka ganun. Okay? So, the definition of the parasitic array is that one or more elements hindi connected sa transmission line. Naintindihan? Dapat may driven ka pa din. Dapat may driven element ka pa din. Kasi yun nga talaga yung magra-radiate at magre-receive ng energy or power. Naintindihan guys? Maliwanag po ba? Ang dami kasi nagkakamali dito before. Uh, wrong uh, connotation. Misconception about the difference ng driven array and parasitic array. So minik to say pala sir, basta may isang parasitic element na doon, parasitic array na po kagad yun. Yes. So, meaning to say, sir, kapag ka lahat na connect sa transmission line, that's the only time that we can call that array as a driven array. Yes, again. Naintindihan po ba? Nagagets naman ang difference ng dalawa. Yes? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now let's talk about the most popular antenna array. no? The Yagi Uda antenna array. So, what's the Yagi Uda antenna array? Yagi yung Yagi Uda Antenna Array is a direct okay, uh, improvisation of the half-wave dipole. So the idea of the Yagi Uda is meron kang, ano, driven, ele meron kang driven element which is essentially a half-wave dipole. Magkakabit ka ng reflector a little bit longer than your driven element. 
this is a parasitic element guys ha? hindi siya connected sa uh, transmission line and maglalagay ka ng director a little bit uh, smaller than your driven element naman so what will happen here is ibablock ng reflector mo or hindi naman ibablock but rather ire-reflect niya no yung uh, kasi di ba ano to uh, bidirectional siya so may signal siya sa likod di ba Iba-block niya yun, ire-reflect niya sa harap. Tapos ito naman, director, dahil mas maliit yung length niya, papatulisin niya yung uh, signal. Nag-guess niya, guys? Naitindihan niyo? Di ba? So, patulis siya eh. So, mas liliit siya. Mas tutulis yung signal mo. Mas magiging narrow yung bimbid mo. Okay? So, that's the idea about the Yagi Uda antenna array. That's the most popular type of antenna array. Uh, I've asked this before, no? Kung inabot nyo pa yung Baron Super Antenna, hindi na daw. So, am I really that old, guys? <laughs> Kasi nung bata ako, no? Merong Baron Super Antenna. Yung kay Ernie Baron. Kilala nyo po ba yun? Hindi na siguro. Yung isang section hindi na daw, eh, no? So, kilala nyo ba? Ah, kilala nyo pa si Ernie Baron, o oh, diba? Itong si President, hindi niya kilala si Ernie Baron. The fuck. Okay? Oh, Pati yung iba kilala pa, no? Oh, so, si Ernie Baron, yung ano, knowledge is power. Hindi alam yun. Grabe yung tanda ko na ba? Oh, anyway, uh, yung huling ano niya, no? yung huling pinangalan sa kanya is the Baron Super Antenna. Ano daw yun? Lahat daw ng channel, malinaw. Pag gumamit ka ng Baron Super Antenna. Usong-uso yun sa amin dati sa, sa Cavite. Meron nga kaming ganun eh, nung bata kami. Oo. Oh. Baron Super Antenna. But technically, the Baron Super Antenna is uh, a Yagi Uda Antenna. So, Yagi Uda Antenna is uh, named after Yagi and Uda. <laughs> hindi, hindi ko alam pangalan eh. <laughs> so, after siya, no, kay Yagi-san and Uda-san. No? Sila yung gumawa ng Yagi Uda Antenna Array. <laughs> okay, again, na, the, the, the Yagi, Yagi Uda Antenna Array is a parasitic array. Okay, uh, this is a direct improvement of the half-wave dipole. So, ang ginagawa ng reflector by the name itself, nire-reflect niya, no, yung nasa puwetan na signal dapat ng, ano, ng half-wave dipole. Tapos si director naman, dinadirect niya na para maging sharp or maging narrow yung bimbid natin. So, another popular uh, antenna array na ginagamit sa television set as well is the lag periodic dipole antenna array. No? So, LPDA array. So, yung lag periodic dipole antenna array is basically a driven array. O, ito ha. Anong ibig sabihin ng driven array, guys? Lahat ng elements mo connected in a transmission line, as you can see here. So, may mga gayang antenna designs din before. No? So, naalala ko yun, guys. Eh, no? Lagi namin, ano, no? Ah... Uh, kinakalikot yung antena namin before kasi nga ang pangit ng reception dun sa bahay namin eh nakatira kasi kami dati guys sa ano sa maraming mga ano maraming mga kawayan ayan kaya medyo mahina yung hindi maganda yung reception namin kaya parang inaayos lagi ng father ko yung uh, antena namin pero wala lang ice ice lang no <laughs> hindi naman ano oh, parang wala lang maayos na to gawa na to ayan try natin kung malinaw na Okay, so uh, may mga antenna design na lag periodic dipole before we have the ano before we have the baron super antenna the our antenna is actually a lag periodic dipole antenna array uh, lahat ng elements na connected parang naka ang makikita mo diyan parang naka ano naka zigzag yung uh, yung transmission line sa kanya okay so that's the lag periodic dipole antenna array So, uh, the keyword here, if you read this, is uh, the lengths of the uh, elements are related logarithmically. Okay? So, automatic, pag may nabasa kayong logarithmically, it refers to the log periodic dipole antenna array. Okay? Uh, this is a wideband antenna. Uh, that's why uh, ma malaking range of frequencies yung kaya niyang i-receive. Okay? So that's it now for the antenna arrays no so I hope that uh, kahit pa paano na guess naman siya. So for our last topic guys no oh, this is also the conclusion of the uh, antenna system antenna theory lecture antenna systems no di ba transmission media and antenna systems ayan Okay, so di discuss natin siya. So by the way our lecture number five, which is the microwave communication system uh We will gonna study that from the start, no? So pag-aaralan natin yung parang transmission line niya, yung kanyang uh, parang radio wave niya, tsaka yung antenna na yung ginagamit sa kanya. And antenna system niya. Kung baga parang yung mga lesson natin before, uulitin natin lahat, no? Uh, for the microwave communication system, which will be our uh, lesson next week. Okay? So for the meantime, let's do this problem.
Okay, so let's do this uh, problem. Okay. And so game, let's do this. Uh, by the way, guys, no, uh, hindi ko nalagay yung operating frequency. So the operating frequency is 750 megahertz. Uh, so let's read this one. An antenna system consisting of transmitting half-wave dipole antenna that has an input power of 10 watts and an elementary doublet on the receiving end which is 40 kilometers away determine A, the power density of the transmitting antenna, B, the capture power of the receiving antenna, C, ah, sorry, the capture area pala, and C, the capture power of the receiving antenna. Okay, and the operating frequency is 750 megahertz. So we've discussed this before, guys. No, Ano ang formula natin for the power density? We have that one before, di ba? So PD lang to, di ba? Power density. Ang formula niya is uh, PT GT over 4 pi D square. Very easy. So easy. Pang baby. Okay, so ano yung PT natin? Transmit power 10 watts. So you put 10 watts here. Okay, multiplied by GT. What is the gain of the transmitting antenna? So dito, it's very particular in the problem. Read the problem carefully. So our transmitting antenna is a half-wave dipole antenna. So if that is a half-wave dipole antenna, what is our gain? Ano po ang gain no, ng half-wave dipole? Okay, 1.64. So gonna put 1.64 here. Okay, divided by, okay, 4 pi times d square. Ano yung distance, no? 40 kilometers. So, 40 times 10 to the 3. Okay, right, that's square natin yan. Okay, what is our power density? What is our power density, guys? Pakai compute nya. Okay, so we have eight point. What's that? Eight one five point sixty seven picowatts. Okay, picowatts per square meter. All right, nice. Okay, next natin guys, we have what? We have uh, letter B. Okay, ito bago to guys, no? Ayan, bago po ito. Uh, capture area. Okay, ano yung capture area na sinasabi natin? If you remember, no? Ano yung diagram natin for the power density before? Yung illustration natin sa power density. Naalala nyo pa yun guys? I think uh, we've discussed that during the wave propagation discussion. Ano naalala nyo itsura nung discussion natin about the power density? Yung inverse square law. Di ba nangyayari guys? As uh, the signal travels farther away from the source, uh, what happens to the energy particles? They tend to what? Kaya nga another term natin doon is blank loss. Eh, no? Naalala nyo pa? Yung sa inverse square law. They tend to uh, actually uh, separate is correct, pero mas proper term is yeah, spread. Diba? So, nag spread siya, guys. Diba? Kaya nga, ang another term natin for that loss is the spreading loss. Diba tinanong kayo, no? What's the solution for that? Anong solution natin dun, guys? Uh, para, kasi kapag ka, uh, habang lumalayo yung distance, pakunti ng pakunti ang marireceive mong signal. Kung gagamitin mo lang ay, ano, uh, yung same na pang-capture mo. Naalala niyo yun? So, what, what's our solution there before na na-discuss natin? Kailangan lalakihan yung capture area. Very good. Okay? That, actually, hindi yung receiver, no? Oo. Oh, hindi, hindi yung receiver, ha? Chukiti, mali yun, ha? Hindi lalakihan yung receiver. Lalakihan yung capture area. Okay? So, now, how do we intend to do that? Paano natin lalakihan yung capture area? Hindi po hindi po lalakihan yung receiver but rather tataasan ang gain ng receiving antenna. Why? Because the capture area or the effective area is equal sa lambda square over 4 pi times the gain of the receiving antenna. Gets guys? 
O diba? Ang mga sagot nyo, tataasan yung effective area. That's correct. Pero how would you do that physically? You need to increase the gain of the receiving antenna. Okay? Or pwede mo rin namang ano, no? uh, babaan yung frequency. But syempre, may, kung may operating frequency ka, uh, why would you change your operating frequency, right? <laughs> so you don't, uh, especially in the Philippines, you cannot just simply change the frequency. No? So uh, may franchise ang frequency, right? Okay. So I think uh, every one of you is already aware, no? Because last year, di ba, uh, it so happened that uh, there's an issue about the franchising of the frequency. Diba? Uh, about the uh, ABS-CBN issue. No? So I, I, I know that uh, most of you being EC students are aware of that. So you have, uh, you have the idea about the intricacies of frequency. You cannot just simply change frequencies, right? No, kasi may, ano yon, may permit yon, may franchise yon. Okay? So may frequency na yun lang ang pwede mong gamitin. No? At nakalaan yun sa iyo. Uh, so yun yung idea. So kasi diba, tinan nyo, uh, kung babaan ko ang frequency ko, tataas din ang effective area ko. Diba? Kaya lang, it's not, uh, it's not really that uh, easy no? to change frequency. Because if you change frequency, you will change your equipment. Diba? Kaya nga, diba, ano, no? uh, bakit, ano, no? ba't kailangan ng ABS na, ma na makuha yung dati nilang frequency? Diba? Ba't hindi nilang kumuha ng bago? Diba? Kasi the idea there is yung mga equipment mo, lahat ng equipment nila, eh, yun yung frequency na kailangan. So, they need to change everything. Diba? Their design and everything. If you change frequency. So, changing frequency is not the solution in this types of problem. So, the main thing that you can change here is to increase the gain. Unless, uh, in another universe, you can change the value of pi. Okay? So, pwede mo, uh, yung pi ko 0.1 na lang. Ayan, no? Lalaki din yung effective area ko. No? So, kuyari, uh, pwede mong baguhin yung value ng pi sa ibang mundo. Yeah, pwede naman. Pero that's the, that's the reason. The, the only thing that you can do is to increase the gain of the receiving antenna. Okay, so we have uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 okay, divided by, ano yung uh, denominator natin? 750. So we have 750 times 10 to the 6 okay, square divided by 4 pi multiplied by the gain of the receiving antenna. Uh, what the hell is our receiving antenna, guys? Uh, elementary doublet. Anong gain nun, guys? What's the gain of the elementary doublet? One point? Ano pong gain? Yeah, 1.5. Okay? So what is the uh, effective area? Yeah, what would be our effective area? Okay, may sagot ng ating Lodi no, na si uh, Pababear. Bagal nyo daw kasi sa magot. Pero uh, this one, uh, since it's quite uh, I mean, the significant figures, no? So, medyo 3 decimal natin to. Or 4 decimal. Ayan, 0 0.019. Okay, gets nyo yung ibig sabihin. Uh, medyo malaking uh, amount of information kasi ang mawawala kung gagawin natin siyang 0 0.02. Okay? Ayan. Uh, I'm not sure about 19.1 millimeter square. I don't think it's 19.1 millimeter square. Let me check, no? 0 0.019 ba? Oh, hindi, no? Ayan, mar mar marami nagkakamali dyan, na. Uh, yung 0 0.019 guys, square meter, ay hindi equivalent sa 19 square millimeter. Okay? <laughs> hindi po siya ganun, ha? Oo. So, pakicheck yun. Kasi to convert this to square millimeter, you need to multiply this by, uh, what's that? In 1 meter, there is, uh, I mean, in 1 millimeter, there is 10 raised to negative 3 meters. Tapos dapat i-squarein mo. So, dapat uh, magiging times 10 to the... Madi-divide mo siya sa times 10 to the negative 6. Marami nagkamali doon last week, no? I mean, last time no nag-discuss ako sa A. So, if that's the case, dapat uh, negative 3, no? Tapos square ko siya 6. So, kung gusto mo siyang millimeter square, 19,000, guys. Ha? 19,000 square millimeter. Okay. Is that clear? Ingat doon na marami nagkakamali doon guys. Hindi porkit times 10 to the negative 3 square millimeters na po. Ha? Ingat po sa ganun. Ingat sa ganun. Ha? So, para hindi ka magkamali, pag area ang tanong, square meter na lang kagad isagot mo. Alright? Alright? Is that clear? Okay. So, okay na to, no? That's the effective area. Yan. Next natin guys is the captured power. Na-discuss na natin to before. So, sulat lang natin. So, yung captured power natin, PC, okay, is equal sa PD times the effective area. Okay? 
Sana yung PD natin, na-compute na natin yan kanina, guys. Po 815, no? 815.67, okay, picowatts per square meter. Yan, multiplied by, ano guys, multiplied by uh, 0.019 square meter. Okay, so your answer is supposed to be in picowatts, right? So what is our captured power? Okay, we have 15. Tama ba to? 15.5? 50 picowatts. Okay. So there's that. Okay, guys. 19 din po. Nagigets naman. Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Okay, so that's it, guys, no? So actually, that ends our uh, lesson for today. All right. So thank you, guys. So stop recording na tayo.